Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the joy and privilege of serving the United Methodist Churches of New Lenox, Okina, and Frankfurt. I welcome you into this time as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and the new life he offers all people. You are invited to participate in that new life in whatever way you are called. So take a moment, take a breath, and let us journey into that life together. Friends, hear the invocation. O God, who through the grace of thy Holy Spirit dost pour the gift of love into the hearts of thy faithful people, grant us health, both of mind and body, that we may love thee with our whole strength and with glad hearts may perform those things which are pleasing unto thee through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, our theme this week as we start Easter Tide, the season of 50 great days leading to Pentecost, has been partakers in eternal life, or partakers of eternal life. Our theme psalm has been Psalm 46, today picking up in verse 8. Come, see the Lord's deeds. What devastation he has imposed on the earth, bringing wars to an end in every corner of the world, breaking the bow and shattering the spear, burning chariots with fire. I bless the reading of the psalm. It's interesting, isn't it? Because uh, the language there, I don't really have time to dig into the Hebrew, but the language there is is fascinating because there's devastation. Uh, things are being destroyed. But what is being destroyed? War is being destroyed. Violence is being destroyed. Tools, weapons, vehicles of war are being destroyed. Interesting, isn't it? What's God's life a life of? Is it a life of conflict? A life of power? A life of destruction? A life of war? It's a life of peace. It's a life where there are no weapons or need for weapons. Where there's no conflict or need for conflict. What is God devastating? The way of life we live into when we're not living into eternal life. God devastates the ways of life that focus on greed, that focus on self, that focus on her harming and hurting others, which ultimately lead to war and devastation at our own hands. Fascinating, isn't it? Especially given the context that this was written in. Fascinating. The hope people had. The hope people still have for eternal life. Our reflection today comes from The Problem of Pain by C.S. Lewis. Scripture and tradition habitually put the joys of heaven into the scale against the sufferings of earth, and no solution of the problem of pain which does not do so can be called a Christian one. We are very shy nowadays of even mentioning heaven. We are afraid of the jeer about pie in the sky and of being told that we are trying to escape from the duty of making a happy world here and now into the dreams of a happy world elsewhere. But either there is pie in the sky or there is not. If there is not, then Christianity is false, for this doctrine is woven into its whole fabric. If there is, then this is truth, like any other must be faced, whether it is useful at political meetings or not. Again, we are afraid that heaven is a bribe, that if we make it our goal, we shall no longer be disinterested. It is not so. Heaven offers nothing that a mercenary soul can desire. It is safe to tell the pure in heart that they shall see God, for only the pure in heart want to. 
There are rewards that do not sully motives. A man's love for a woman is not mercenary because he wants to marry her, nor is his love for poetry mercenary because he wants to read it, nor is his love of exercise less disinterested because he wants to run and leap and walk. Love, by definition, seeks to enjoy its object. Fascinating. Uh, interesting work from C.S. Lewis. If you want to pick that up, it's uh, referred to um, as the problem of pain. There's a lot of other modern uh, theologians, good theologians, who have worked on the problem of suffering and, and things like that in the world. But but C.S. Lewis kind of working in, in his kind of uh, day and, and kind of thinking it's World War II era that he lived, where either right we, we're we're all uh, just waiting to leave this horrible earth and float up to heaven, uh, or hey, let's not be concerned about heaven at all. Let's we we just gonna. And the reality is, why not? Why not both? Why not hope that there is eternity in God, but also work to make that eternity present wherever we can, however we can, even in its imperfection now. Why can't both be true? Why can't we hold both and, and, and not hold them like with a closed fist, but but hold them with an open hand, experiencing them in a myriad of ways every day of our life, knowing that we can experience eternal life powerfully today and, and, and powerfully tomorrow and powerfully 10 years from now and probably much more powerfully after we die. Whatever that looks like. John Wesley referred to it as joy. Pure joy. Christ came so that our joy may be complete. And so John Wesley really felt heaven was just joy. And so why can't we have a hope for a perfect joy? But also then live into it, lean into it today. We don't have to mope around. We don't have to be saddened and hopeless. Nor do we have to, on, on the other hand, you know, completely believe that there's nothing after this life and everything we have is here and so we have to make it the best we can and then constantly be disappointed as we fail <laughs> because we will continue to fail because there are a lot of other people who don't care and we continuously clash up against that it doesn't mean we stop working and that's why i think it's both and i think we do everything within our power to do all the good we can to make thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven knowing that in the end it will be in the end there is joy no matter what god wins our scripture reading today comes from second corinthians Chapter 4, we'll pick up in verse 7. But we have this treasure in clay pots, so that the awesome power belongs to God and doesn't come from us. We are experiencing all kinds of trouble, but we aren't crushed. We are confused, but we aren't depressed. We are harassed, but we aren't abandoned. We are knocked down, but we aren't knocked off. We always carry Jesus' death around in our bodies so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies. We who are alive are always being handed over to death for Jesus' sake so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies that are dying. So death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. We have this same faithful spirit as is written in Scripture, I had faith, so I spoke. We also have faith, so we also speak. We do this because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus. And he will bring us into this presence along with you. All these things are for your benefit. As grace increases to benefit more and more people, it will cause gratitude to increase, which results in God's glory. So we aren't depressed. But even if our bodies are breaking down on the outside, the person that we are on the inside is being renewed every day. Our temporary minor problems are producing an eternal stockpile of glory for us that is beyond all comparison. We don't focus on things we can't that can be seen, but on things that can't be seen. 
The things that can be seen don't last, but the things that can't be seen are eternal. I love this passage. I, I, I just, I, I come across people all the time inside the church and outside of the church and everywhere in between that they get so down on themselves. And, and it's not, I mean, there are some people with troubles, right? I mean, there are people with troubles. And, and, and there, are, there are people we know who are living in war-torn parts of the world like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about somebody who, you know, something starts hurting or somebody in their life passes away or you know something they can't start they can't do something anymore like like the, these little or, or just even littler things that just little irritations and and they let those just get to them so much and and let those consume them and and and, and they lose out on being renewed each day because yeah your body is dying But there's new life. And I know the people like that. And if you want to be like anybody, you want to be like those people. Sometimes they annoy you because they're just so good. <laughs> like, how can you be this good? But it's because they got that joy. They have that life. And, and they know whatever else is going on, God loves me. Whatever else is going on, I got a home in glory. Whatever else is going on, I am made new each day. Those are the people I love being around. Because they encourage me. Helps me encourage the other people. <laughs> because there's enough joy for us all. There's enough life for us all. There's enough love for us all. Let's continue to encourage each other even while we live in clay pots. Friends, today we pray for others. We call these prayers of intercession. And we'll use our five-finger prayer, praying for those closest to us, our family and friends, our teachers, those who bring us closer to God and lead us to God or point us to God, our leaders and those in authority, the sick, the poor, the weak, those in need. And finally, you. Pray for yourself. Let us take a moment to pray. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.